Um, are you seeing like, you know, let me ask you this question because Australia was, was one of the notoriously, particularly Victoria, Melbourne was one of the most locked down places in the mm -hmm. world. Um, and just like in the United States, and correct me if I'm wrong, there was no talk or emphasis on metabolic health, mm -hmm. you know, taking care of yourself, working on your actual self to 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 avoid the consequences of, of you know an infectious respiratory disease did yeah. you know was that is that a fair observation oh, absolutely yeah no there, there was none of that absolutely none of that and it, you know and, it, and if you didn't sort of you know do the, the the prescribed protocol i mean you were just you were just an absolute heathen you were you were just shunned from society by mm -hmm. a lot of people and and you were you were blamed on deaths that, that had yeah. nothing to do with you so it was quite um it, it was quite strange, and especially for for you know fellow doctors to to just not just just to forget everything they ever learned mm -hmm. about medicine and yeah. respiratory yeah. illnesses. And yeah. um, you know it was very bad. And you know Victoria uh, was was worse than a lot of people know because you know some people have seen the videos. I'm sure I'm sure you probably have seen these videos. These stormtroopers coming down and just just beating the hell out of people for the high crime of being outside uh, in the summer. Yeah. And uh, you know there were there were protests, um, and you, and you'd see the at least the military coming up, you know, and not even telling them to disperse. And they weren't even like yelling or shouting. They were literally just standing there with picket signs by this memorial. And they just came up and started just firing rubber bullets into the crowd mm -hmm. without any warning, without saying, hey, get out of here or we'll do this. They just started just firing off. And uh, apparently they made uh, protesting illegal in 2016. That one sort of flew under the radar for a lot of people, I'm assuming. And all of a sudden, it's just like, oh no, yeah, you can't do that, you know. And uh, and so the people going out there are like, hey, we don't like this, and like that's a crime, and you get to be shut down by the police. Wow, that's that's crazy, crazy, craziness. I got to tell you, you know, as someone who, uh, you know, as a surgeon, you know, you take people to the operating room, they they put your trust in your hands, and you consent them, and you tell them, hey, these are the potential pros and cons, and if they decide in their own best judgment that it's not worth it. You leave them alone. You let them do what they want to do. That's it. I saw a lot of this sort of uh, heavy handed stuff that probably informed consent was actually not properly given. Um, so you're, you're back to Australia when in a couple of days, right? Yeah. Saturday morning, fly back. So back on call on what Sunday or something like that, probably. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it'll, it'll, I'll lose a day yeah. uh, for, for flying. So I'll get in like late Sunday night and then sure enough, yeah, be on call Monday. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's ever not been that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, if you go out, if you take vacation, you're probably going to take call. Like you're going to yeah. make up for all the time you missed for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. So do you have, what are your thoughts on, you know, like I said, you're in a, in a very much a, a you know, traditional role as a, as a, as a potentially neurosurgeon, mm -hmm. uh, as a neurosurgeon. Um, do you have thoughts that healthcare is going to, fix itself and and all of a sudden the pharmaceutical companies are going to decide hey we we've not been made, doing the right thing let's do lifestyle where, where do you think it's going or where do you think it's going to happen yeah no I, unfortunately i don't think uh, uh things are going in a, in a good direction you know i think i think i think it's very 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 set in the in the standard that you know you have a problem you have a pill for that problem let's go find more pills more pill more problems more pills and, um, you know, I, I think that that's, you know, a bit of a, a broken paradigm, you know, and uh, we've sort of forgotten the entire history of, of uh, Hippocratic medicine for the last you know, 2,500 years. And, um, you know, so I, I think that, you know, if, if you're not addressing, you know, the, the underlying cause of these conditions, that you're really missing the mark. I mean, you're, you're just doing disease management as opposed to being a doctor where you're trying to heal someone and get them better and, and make them healthy. I mean, that, that's really what a doctor is supposed to be is someone who who helps you achieve optimal health and uh and 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 get over these sorts of issues i mean before this whole chronic disease you know spate has uh, has jumped up you know you know medicine we were dealing with traumas we we're dealing with childbirth and delivery you know pregnancy uh you know childhood illnesses and infectious disease it was really sort of straightforward things and we, and we had a pretty good you know, handling things. Obviously, we can do things a lot better with with modern medicine, but you know, now it's all chronic disease. I think I think that chronic disease, and, and you know, you may agree with me, is are not really diseases per se. I, I would say that they're more in the line of toxicities and malnutrition. You get we're getting uh, you know poisoned by these different defense chemicals and eating inappropriately for our species, and we're also not getting enough nutrition. And so now we're just we're we're trying to treat uh, you know you know, a poison state and a malnourished state with medication somehow, and somehow it's not working. And I, you know, I'm not really surprised by that. And so I think that, that 
there unfortunately aren't really too many economic driving forces to to push that model of just getting people better and healing uh, without pills and getting them off pills i think it's sort of a drivers in the opposite direction so you know it's uh we just sort of have to figure out you know how to make that you know, e- economically feasible mm-hmm. to actually just get people better as opposed to just managing their diseases yeah i mean that's what our company in rivera we're, we're, our, our mission is to do just that and yeah. it's you know not only convincing people that they need to do it and want to do it and actually allowing them to do it but then also making it you know economically feasible and someone has to someone has to reap some kind of economic reward from that and so it may be you're taking money out of pharmacy's hand and you're giving it to a company that's not losing money uh you know on the cost side you know it's cost yeah. saving so can they just can those equal out so that is uh for sure uh you know a challenge there um you know you'd mentioned you know you, you know talking about you know you think believe that we are a carnivorous species and however you want to define that is we eat all meat mostly meat you know or hyper carnival or whatever whatever you want to say i think there's some decent evidence that would support that but there's a lot of people who say well it doesn't really matter what we ate you know a hundred thousand years ago it's, it's irrelevant today because we're not living a hundred thousand years ago and so many things are different and they'll say that you know well, you know, you should be, we should be able to just put cobble some new, some ingredients together, even if it's highly processed, and we should be able to just find something that works for us. But I, my experience has been that doesn't seem to be very successful. You know, with with uh, with past efforts, you know, we can use margarine or whatever example you want mm-hmm. to put out there. But do you what do you say to the people that say that it doesn't matter what our species used to eat? We're we're in twenty twenty two. Just yeah. eat what's available now yeah well i mean you know the thing is is that you know we're not living a hundred thousand years ago but our genetics are you yeah. know we really haven't changed too much you know like some of us have you know people you know from uh, uh you know european stock and others have had more exposure to agriculture you know from the agricultural revolution and then say contrast that with native americans or or native australian aboriginals you know they they don't really have as many defenses so you know so so we would have built up uh, a little bit of, of mm-hmm. defense towards these plant toxins more than others but you know the Aboriginal uh, in Australia. I mean, they they get absolutely hammered. They're so unwell yeah. as a, as a population. Uh, when I first got down there, uh, we were told. I was told that when we see an Aboriginal po- uh, patient, whatever their birthday says, add twenty to that. You know, because you just they just age so much faster. Mm-hmm. And so if you're if you're treating someone who's forty five, they come in to see you. Basically, think of them as a sixty five year old because that's the types of diseases that uh, they'll be getting already. And uh, and you definitely see that you know they 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 are uh, breaking down and so they don't have these these defenses so I think that um, uh, you know genetically we are still in in that in that mm-hmm. past you know it takes a very very long time to to change you know, something as fundamental as as our diet yeah you know and uh, and if you look at you know, anatomically that metabolically and biologically you know they're, they're really not capable or or prepped to break down a large amounts of, of, of fibrous plant matter who are perfectly adapted to uh, break down and absorb meat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that our, despite what <laughs> the vegans seem to think, we are not her- herbivores by any stretch yeah. of imagination. So that's clearly not, you can debate about whether or not we're omnivorous or carnivorous mm-hmm. or how carnivorous we were, but clearly we're not herbivores. Um, the, uh, you know, the point about, genetic shift i think that that is an important part it does take a long time to make those big changes we're not going to go from uh, a, a mostly carnivorous species to an herbivorous species or, or whatever the hell you know processed food species which we, yeah. we are uh, becoming over a period of even one, you know, one generation or even probably 100 generations to be honest so yeah. 